Hello, I'm Margaret and I'm back to talk today about data collection. Now I know for some of you, especially novice action researchers, will be a little bit nervous about data collection. And that's understandable because it might not be something that you've ever done before. But don't worry, you'll learn as you move forward. Since action research is a process of continual learning, over time you will develop the expertise to be really um, efficient and skillful action researchers. So don't worry, if this is your first time, you will develop the skills that you need to be able to do your first cycles of research. In previous uh, tutorials, you developed your action research question and your logic model. Both of those will help you with your first activity in this tutorial, which is to develop your uh, data collection plan. So you start with your logic model and you look at what your near outcomes are. And those near outcomes should have been what you use to form your research question. I suggested a research question in the form of if I, and then the, uh, describe the action that you plan to take fairly specifically, how or what effect will it have on? And then that, that outcome that you're looking for is what you need to measure. So if your outcome is student engagement, then you need to think about what evidence would help you determine whether or not students were more engaged. If your outcome was a learning outcome, then an assessment test of their knowledge might be a better outcome. If you're trying to increase collaboration or peer editing or collaborative work within the workplace, those are different kinds of outcomes and each of them will have a kind of measurement that is appropriate for the outcome that you're looking for. So activity one is your data collection plan. So the first thing you're going to have to decide on is what data am I going to collect? You can collect what people think, say, or feel about what happened by using interviews or questionnaires or surveys. Focus groups can be effective. Those are all different ways of getting at people's perspective in the setting, and those are commonly used in action research. You can also use data that records what people do. As I said a minute ago, if you were looking at student learning, then an assessment test of some kind, either a self-assessment, a test, a quiz, some kind of a rubric, even the student's ability to be able to create a rubric could be evidence of their understanding of the task that you're trying to create. The other thing you can look at is what people do. To do this, you can look at performances in the classroom or in the workplace. You can count or check things. So it can be attendance, it can be things, if you're working online, it can be computer records. It, you can also sample during the course of an activity. So fr a frequent measure that is used in educational research is time on task. So at regular intervals, you can have your um, watch beep at five minute intervals or just make a quick scan and give a percent of the people in the classroom or in the workplace or in the workshop that are on task. And then you can look at whether you know, increase in or decrease in time on task as you change the nature of the task. You can also collect things like photographs or videotapes or audio tapes that you can then use to look at behavior uh, again and again. So, you know, one way of recording, one way of collecting data is to collect it in the setting, making marks or making, uh, taking records as things are happening. Another is to have a recording device, either an audio tape, a videotape, photographs, that give you a chance to look more closely at the data um, future point. And attendance at meetings, logs of meetings, things that happened in the meeting. One of the other kinds of measures that people sometimes use is where do people go for help in the setting? So how many questions were asked? Who asked the questions? What kinds of questions were they? Get, you know, looking to see where help was both offered and given is another way of you know, measuring the outcome of a particular implementation because if there is a lot of need for help then it gives you some clue about the kinds of things that the students or the co-workers found difficult. 
So the next question in your data collection plan is why are you collecting this data? You really want to collect only that data that will help you answer the question that you've posed. So if you're asking about student engagement, then you really don't need to collect a lot of data about other things. Really focus on what is the outcome you're trying to create and then really think about whether or not the data artifact that you're thinking of collecting is going to be one that really helps you get at the, at the um, outcome that you're trying to measure. And then of course you have to have a data collection plan. When and where are you going to collect the data, how you're going to collect it. Um, so that's that will be part of thinking through this process of collecting data. And the final thing that's really important is do you have permission, do you need consent to collect the data? It's important that you consider the ethical issues. We cover that in an earlier tutorial and it might be useful to go back and look at that tutorial and it also might be useful to check with your advisor, with your principal, with your supervisor to help determine whether or not your plan is something that matches the dimensions of your job. You don't need permission if you're doing something that you would normally do in the course of your job. But if you're doing something that's a little different, then you need to make sure that you check that you have permission to do that. The second activity that I'm suggesting is one that will help you build your knowledge in research techniques. The tutorials or modules that I'm going to suggest were developed by SRI and the online evaluation resource library. Um, so these resources are really designed for evaluation research and I hope you can tell us what the difference is between evaluation and uh, action research, but let me just give you a quick, a quick summary. Evaluation research is often done by outsiders who join a project that is being done and they look at both the process of implementing the project, and, and that's called formative evaluation, and at the end of the project they look to see whether or not the objectives were reached and that's called summative um, evaluation. Action research is, a, is more like formative evaluation, um, that is you're looking at things as they're going along to, with the goal of trying to make them better, but you're not an outsider. You are a practitioner in the setting and you are looking at it not just once to give feedback, but you are looking at it over time. And it's the over time that is really important in action research. So it's a continual cycle of getting better at understanding what the variables are. But since lots of the techniques that you might use overlap with evaluation research, I'm going to suggest that you pick a few of the modules that they have developed and go through as a way of building your research knowledge. Particularly if you plan to use a questionnaire or a survey or if you want to know more about what it means to triangulate data to collect uh, different forms of data and, and help, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about data analysis. But this will help you get a sense of what are some of the techniques that researchers use and the tutorials are put together in a pretty interesting way and I guess it would be really great in the future if we were able to develop a similar kind of set of tutorials to help action researchers. The third activity is to continue writing your blog and I know I say this in every one of these tapes but the blog is really important. It's really more a journal than it is a blog although blogging technology really is helpful for keeping a journal. The important thing is that you continue to document your own thinking over time. There are some uh, reflection questions listed with the activity and there's some links to more reflection questions. The next three activities are really to help you develop your report of your action research. We'll be doing that all the way along so that you don't end up at the end with facing a huge document to write. We'll be writing different sections of it through each tutorial. So I've asked you to just quickly explain what is your action research about. Don't use things that you've written before. Write it fresh. See what your thinking is right now about what you're doing and why you're doing it. I also suggested that you create a timeline because it's really important for you to have a sense of when these cycles are going to take place. It's hard to plan the second and third cycle because they build on the first cycle 
and you don't know exactly what's going to happen or what your idea is going to be. But being planful about your activity is important. The third activity is to move from your um, plan that we developed uh, in previous tutorials to a report. So you're starting to put things into order so that you can start building out your report that you'll want to share with others when you're finished with your with a number of cycles of action research. And of course you're never really finished with action research. You just decide at various points that you've reached enough closure, enough understanding that it's time to share out what you're doing so that you can get more feedback. So as you continue you will have the benefit of the ideas that came from taking that time to share your ideas. The final activity is just to remind you that action research is always better done in groups. It's great to have a learning circle or a discussion group or a, uh, a number of people in a course with you to share your ideas and get the feedback as you're moving along, that formative assessment that will help you think wider than you would normally think. Think with the experience of others. Think with the eyes and visions of others as you move forward. And with all of these tutorials, there are a set of resources that help develop the activity. So I hope you will explore those resources. And then I hope you return for the next tutorial, which will be on analyzing the data that you've collected. So good luck with your data collection.